Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. My name is Noah Averwez. I'm a designer here at Adafruit, and joining me every week is my brother Pedro. Good morning, everybody. I'm Pedro Rose, Creative Tech here at Adafruit, and every week we're here to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This is where we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to make inspirational projects for all of you folks. Hello, everybody. We're hanging out in the Discord chat room. We want to give out some shouts to everybody joining us during the live show. If you would like to join us during the live show, you can do so by heading over to discord.gg slash Adafruit and we're in the live broadcast channel. Giving a shout out to Mr. Certainly Bruce is hanging out. Hello, I hope you are doing well, as well as everybody. Hope they're all doing well. Yes, we got everybody hanging out in the Discord, YouTube, Twitch, LinkedIn, and Periscope. Additional shout outs to Patrick Ranskin, Quentin, Xbox Gamer, Unicorn Donut. Mmm, that's delicious. Good morning, everybody hanging out that's in all flavor. of the chat rooms. Unicorn flavor is the best flavor. All right, well, as you folks join in, we'll say hello to you. Um, I'm gonna try to go a little quick here. So let's jump right into what we're doing. We got freebies, so head on over to adafruit.com slash free to find out all the details. If you scroll down, you can see all the different things. Um, we've still got 100 days of masking going on, a few days remaining in this uh, kind of campaign. So. Any orders you get from Adafruit, you get that black surgical mask. Very, very nice. And some other good goodies that I will omit from now because we uh, got a lot to cover. Um, yeah, and my, you know, the audio stuff. <laughs> All right, so I have that. And then Circuit Python meetings happen every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So if folks want to check in with the community and the core devs on Circuit Python, you can tune in on the Discord server every Monday at 2 p.m. It gets posted as an archive on YouTube and in all lots of different podcast players as well. So you can check those out in your podcast choice, player of choice. Adafruit has a jobs board. Check out jobs.adafruit.com as uh, employers are, are posting up things and um, makers are posting up their profiles. It's free to do so. And you can go to jobs.adafruit.com to get started. We have newsletters that are going on once a week. It's focused on products. As new products get added to the store, a, a, this newsletter goes to your inbox. So if you want to subscribe to that, head on over to adafruit.com slash newsletter. And if once a week isn't enough, you can get a daily dose of Adafruit posts, stories, what have you. Go to adafruitdaily.com and check out all the categories that might interest you, such as CircuitPython. That's Python on hardware, IoT monthly, or is it weekly? I think it's IoT monthly. <laughs> uh, 3D printing, biohacking, and more. So check out adafordaily.com. Cool, this feels like a real show <laughs> with all the intro stuff. All right, I'm gonna go back over here to uh, the Discord and shout out to Bruce for posting all those lovely links to all the things that I just chatted about. And good morning, Liz, sweet. Additional shout outs to, to our man VP, I am Jason H, DCD, Minnesota, Mentat, Susan. Thank you all for joining us today. And it was Yanni a little rough morning, out. but we're, we're in. Cast. You might hear some hammers and things, but it's fine as we, uh, as we have a little bit of a kitchen demo downstairs. <laughs> all right, let's okay. go ahead and jump into this week's project, with, which is sort of a. Yeah, this week's project is like. Week. Already in the back, it's integrated into our shelf here. So this is our 32 by 32 pixel display running CircuitPython. It's using the new Feather RP2040. And this week, we just want to talk about the Learn Guide. The Learn Guide came out on Friday. And uh, let's go ahead and kind of jump into, not that, but this one, <laughs> this week's project. It's this week's last week's. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It's like nothing. No, it's here. It's the, it's the Learn Guide for that 32 by 32 matrix display, which is in stock right now, really nice. Um, the feathers are not in stock, so if you want this RP2040 feather, please sign up. You can pop your email in here and you'll get notified when they're back in stock. If you really want to build this, you can use any feather. The code is the code in the matrix library for CircuitPython will run with any of the feathers, notably the M4, the M0, and the NRF52840. But be careful with the NRF52840 as you need a special NRF52840 matrix feather wing. That one was a specific design for those pens. But with that out of the way, you got your feather, you got your RGB mat matrix feather wing, and your doubler, and that's what makes the, the brains for this project. 
Um, black LED acrylic is another kind of secret sauce that makes this thing look really good. Um, yeah, so all that's kind of linked here. Um, we have some more reading. If you want to dive deeper into the Feather RP2040, there's a learn guide that's dedicated for that. And there's also a dedicated learn guide for making projects in CircuitPython for RGB matrices. And that's a guide by Jeff Epler, who is one of the, uh, the co-authors of the libraries, um, the ProtoMatter libraries. So check this one out if you are making some custom uh, projects with the uh, CircuitPython and RGB matrix stuff. Wonderful. All right, so uh, those are the parts. Most of them are in stock, which I'm happy about. And now let's go to the next page. Now, there, normally with these learn guides and projects, we have a circuit diagram. There's no circuit diagram for this because it's all feathers. You literally just plug them in. So that's cool. But let's take a look at the CAD files. So the CAD files page shows you all the CAD files. There's only five of them, right? There's some feet, there's some, a frame, a grid, and a cover. They all snap fit together. Um, this one requires a minimum build volume of at least 210 by 210. That's going to be your kind of, um, I don't want to call it average, but your tip, no, not even common. Uh, a Prusa i3 has a build volume of, I believe, 210 by 210 by some X. Doesn't matter on the X, or the Z rather, because it's not that tall of an enclosure. But anyway, you do need a fairly large uh, build volume to print these parts. Um, so the STLs are available, the CAD source file is available as a step file. So if you're using something other than Fusion 360, you can import the step file and get all the original sketches and models. But if you do have Fusion 360 and you want to tweak some things like the tolerances or the pitch spacing, for the pixels, you can modify it uh, using user parameters. You can quickly adjust some of the, um, the parameters. So that's what's in the Fusion file. And then what helped me cut out a very accurate um, piece of acrylic is this PDF template. Just a note about the PDF template. Make sure when you print your PDF template that your scale is set to 100% because I made the mistake before of printing my template with an auto scale where it scales to fill. shows you how to install CircuitPython on your board. You want to have the latest version of CircuitPython, so that's why we always have this up to date. And it's a uh, reoccurring page that uh, gets updated when things get updated. But the same song and dance, you hold down the bootloader button as you plug it into USB. It shows up as a boot drive. You drag and drop that UF2 file, and it automatically reflashes as a CircuitPy drive. And uh, the RP2040 has uh, 8 megabytes of, of, of spy flash. You can toss in all the libraries but this is something different. So let's go over to the code page. This is the first project where we are, we're reworking these pages so that they are guiding folks to get the project bundle. So before, we'd have another page that was standalone that talks about installing libraries. And that's like this huge kind of ordeal. But now it's all in this project bundle. So as you click and download the project bundle, it's going to grab all of the libraries and dependencies dynamically, which is awesome. Huge shout out to the team for making this work. This is going to solve lots of issues, we hope. Um, so this is the first guide from us that has the project bundle. So it's like download the bundle and then drop all your files in. No third step, which is great. So um, here's what it looks like with all the, uh, the libraries that it grabs and it even comes with the bitmaps. Now these bitmaps were designed for a 64 by 32 RGB matrix back when the matrix portal uh, was happening. So this is using that same code, same assets, um, but because the display is 64 by 32 and not a 32 by 32, there is a small piece of code that you have to update. And if you scroll down, you can see what it is. It's just when you're setting up the display, all you need to do is specify your width. So the width of your display gets specified here in this block, and that's pretty much it. There's also some built-in button support. 
uh, particularly for this uh, kind of slideshow player, I guess I could call it. Um, there are two buttons to advance, but we're not really using them. If you'd like to use them, these are the pins that I have specified. And these pins will need to be changed depending on the feather you are using. These pins will work okay for the Feather RP2040, which is kind of like the main thing for this project. Um, but yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, project bundles is, is hopefully going to be a, a thing that everybody uses going forward. So I hope uh, that you know makes things a lot simpler. So you don't have to chase down and do this manual dragging dropping of the individual libraries that are needed for this. Just download the project bundle, you get all your stuff. What do you think? It's good? Incredible. Very, Very good. We catch for breath. OK, cool. All right, let's go to the next page, Sprite Sheets. So you do get these bitmaps when you download the project bundle, but those are bitmaps specified for 64 by 32. They will play on here, but they won't be like, you know. Cropped properly. They won't be cropped properly. So I have provided you some Sprite Sheets. There's a little bit of a gray area when it comes to like copyright stuff, artwork for these memes. Please don't sue me, but I will take these down if you tell me to. Person who has made Nylon Cat and Party Parrot. Like, I'll take them down, just tell me. But I have kind of handcrafted these um, so that they fit a 32 by 32. Um, so you can download these bitmaps. Don't sue me. Uh, those are the only two I, I offered, because obviously I don't have the rights to, uh, to, these, to these sprite Mario. sheets in the back there. That's Mario and... Well, maybe somebody made that one. I don't know, but I'm not going to give that one out. But you can you can kind of create your own. We have All right, hey, what's up, folks? Hello. Let me uh, fix this real quick. Um, our audio has been up and down, but we got it back up. Let me go ahead and fix this Safari sprite sheets. We were looking at sprite sheets, and here we are. All right, so back over to the sprite sheets. Really great guide by John Park with some extra bitmaps if you want to get these. This is a good like walking animation if you want to get that going. And uh, definitely check out that A Sprite app. Really, really good. I recommend it. That's how I created all of my sprite sheets. It's a great way to kind of you, you can pull some artwork down from the internet if it's a GIF, and then you can use this to kind of make it into that exploded uh, film strip in, in the bitmap that you need, in the format that you need. So very, very cool. You know, that was a little video of like showing the conversion process. So great job. Good, uh, good resource. This whole guide is a great resource too um, on uh, the Matrix Port Library and uh, the artwork, pixel artwork. All right, but back over here, into our project learn guide. You can get those two uh, lovely sprite sheets. And the rest of it's gonna walk you through sort of the assembly. So uh, uh, setting up the, the, the headers for your feathers, it's very particular to this setup. So um, I'm doing it uh, where I feel like this is the most mechanically stable approach to these feathers headers setup. So we're using nail headers here for, uh, for the the Matrix Feather Wing and the RP2040 Feather. And uh, I'm showing here that I'm using a breadboard to help me uh, keep the headers on straight while you solder. That's sort of my trick whenever I'm soldering uh, strips of headers to a PCB. Um, I tend to use my breadboard because it keeps those things in place nice and flat. Cool. Um, so I walk through installing the, the extra little header bits uh, for the RGB Feather Wing. It's very kind of particular to, in this order where the, uh, the IDC box headers like fitted on top as opposed to the bottom. Um, but yeah, that walks you through that. And then it walks you through setting up the feather doubler. So you're setting these up with these female socket style header pins. And um, there's no circuit diagram because like I said, you just plug them in. You can't plug it in the wrong way. You can, it's just, it's keyed that way. That's why there's a 12 and a 16 pin. Good, good job, Lamar, on that specification. Did I already go down again? <laughs> no, okay. All right, and then so that's it, setting up the headers. 
And the last bit is just kind of um, using these standoffs and screws uh, to attach the doubler to the 3D printed frame. That's that purple thing here. So that gets secured there um, with these standoffs and screws. And then these feet, a bit of an optional thing. Um, it should stand up okay, but it tends to tip over if you like look at it too long. So you got these two feet um, with some hex nuts and some M3 screws. You can attach them to the bottom of the frame. The bottom of the frame has these recessed spots uh, dedicated for these M3 hex nuts and that will kind of capture and keep your feet secured. You could also glue them. And then uh, this walks you through installing the acrylic sheet into the, uh, into the cover and then the grid fits on top of your RGB matrix. And then um, the RGB matrix PCB gets fitted into the frame. And then we can connect all of the, uh, the power cables to the matrix feather wing with the little screwdriver because it has screw block terminals. And the other, the other end just connects directly into the power port on the back of the 32 by 32. And the IDC cable um, plugs into the top header, IDC header of the RGB matrix feather wing and plugs into that, uh, that hub 75 connector for the input of the, uh, the display. And then you can plug in the power. Bam, super cool. Definitely check out the YouTube video as well. It really walks through cutting the acrylic and um, something else that I, oh yeah, taking apart the uh, the. themed artwork um, throughout a, a seasonal change out idea. of these little bitmaps. Yeah. I'd love to see the new Neo characters on here. Maybe we can work with Bruce or something. Mm, yeah, all the new Trinkies. That'd be sweet. Let's see, just going through some of the comments here. Shout out to, uh, Tyler and Lauren. They're crushing it right now on these new uh, Super secret stuff I can't tell you about, but I'm I don't know if they've sh if Lamar and Phillips mm -hmm. shown it off no, yet, it's or maybe too, Brent has shown off the mm -mm. No, it's dynamic too, components. It's too new, man. Haha, -ha. it's gonna be so cool. Only one other soul knows about it. <laughs> ah, the whole dev team knows. <laughs> mm. Oh, you mean outside of that? Outside of the dev okay. team. Is cool audio like out again? Someone is asking. No, 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 no. Let's it should be see. fine. Hello. Nope. 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 You're good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, are we ready for the lemon? Yes, everybody is lemon. wanting lemons. I want to read the comment from, was it Quentin? Who asked earlier that he's here from the lemon life.
Again. Yeah, sure. All right, so this week we're prototyping 11 because life just keeps giving us them. Um, so yeah, I was talking about the... Uh... Yeah, I was talking about the, the, the kale switches. Oh no, it's stuck now, dude. There we go. Uh, so yeah, we have the kale switches now in, uh, <laughs> in the Adafruit shop. And these are the white ones. Um, these, these caps can be switched out and stuff. Uh, trying to get my uh, train of thought back here. But yeah, there's this just kind of... Assemble it and then yeah. re reshow the whole thing again. Ooh. My <laughs> caps are all coming off. <laughs> yeah, still working on it, right? All right, so Cutie Pie, RP2040, really nice board. This is a jewel with seven NeoPixels on it. And they all snap fits. It's all 3D printed. Um, let's plug it in. I, it's not a good idea to plug it in, but I'll do it anyway. Just to kind of see this thing glow, because it does have that that um, LED animation. And uh, it's not working now. <laughs> yeah, well, that's fine. I may have broken something or... There it goes. Cool, so it looks great uh, with the, uh, you know, a translucent white material. So uh, I, I'm going to use it as a media controller. So volume, mute, play, pause, forward, that sort of stuff. I don't want to press it because it will actually do that. Um, but yeah, it's using CircuitPython HAD library, which now has consumer controls, which is mute, play, all those media controls. But you can make it do whatever you'd like. Um, it just kind of fits like that on your desk. It's yay big. And um, fruity flavors, right? Yeah, so Lamar uh, had the suggestion to do a hamburger one. Is that it was what it a was? pizza. Pizza. With that's arcade what it was. buttons. Yeah. This came out a couple years ago, and um, I've been meaning to do some sort of fun keypad. Uh, this is probably my second custom keypad. The first one I did was a Cherry MX PCB that I milled, and it was like a feather wing. Um, this one's no custom PCB, all 3D printed. and. In my opinion, it's a little bit more practical and a little bit more flavorful. So hmm. that's the Lemon project. Our audio is still going. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, Best Ape is saying that the Lemon looks like uh, their buddy's Artifone. Orpa. Orpa. Yeah. I've not seen yeah, that Artifone. It's a little, um, it's like a little synthesizer. Yeah, you can make this a MIDI controller, I suppose. Um, with the Stemma QT connector, you can plug in an accelerometer really easy or any sensor, really. A display, if you wanted to. You can do so much stuff with the Stemma QT. This board is amazing. The, uh, the RP2040, dual core Ooh. M0. Circuit Pilot, eight megabytes of flash all. Take a look at this chip, man. This thing's bananas. So I yeah. had to come up with this 3D model of the uh, of the new Cutie Pie board, and man, it is dense. Look at the back there. There's all these small uh, resistors that, you know, You've got to consider them when you're designing a case where this is going to snap fit. You can totally break these pieces, so that's why I had to come up with the model of it. Because I, I kind of did break one. Don't, don't tell anyone I broke one. Especially my boss. She'll get mad. <laughs> uh, Quentin's asking for the files. Uh, once they're yeah, finalized, yeah, they'll no, be no, released sorry. next week. Yeah, next week. This is going to be next week's project. Hopefully. Maybe and not, actually. Let me weeks. link where uh, all of these are actually posted before. Yeah. It's uh, uh, the GitHub for the learning guys. Yeah, you can get the 3D model of the Cutie Pie board. Um, I kind of had to pull this out of the private repo, but it's all good. It's uh, Katni Rambo is working on the learn guide for this one. So the learn guide is in the yes. works. Uh, the fritzing object as well is in the works. Um, this lemon kind of forced me to do the 3D model first. Normally I waited a week or two after the thing's released. And yesterday on John's uh, show, we sold like 70 of them in like two minutes for a ridiculous price of, uh, four bucks. of like $4 or something crazy. So if you got one of those, like save it for the lemon. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> uh, Make some uh, tasty lemon there. Yeah, man. Or an orange or some lime or something. But yeah, the RP2040, sign up for that when it gets back in stock. And for everybody who got one, uh, Check out uh, circuitpython.org and download and install the latest version of CircuitPython. It doesn't ship with CircuitPython, but uh, it does ship with the bootloader. So you just hold down the boot select button and plug it in. Yeah, USB-C. You need to get more USB-C cables. <laughs> uh, Liz is uh, requesting a watermelon. 
<laughs> the watermelon will be a, a separate project. The watermelon gun, yeah. yeah. But yeah, maybe we do watermelon too. Oh, then uh, Alvaro is saying that if you could rotate the top, that would be awesome to du to double as a rotary encoder. Oh, I thought about I think that. some of the wires yeah, would get twisted. So cool. but... Yeah, you, there's some things that we could do. Like if we were to mount these guys to this Ooh, plate, to the top. then you could dolly twist it. Um, yeah. That's a cool idea. It's a good concept. I thought about that too. Like I wish I could do more, where I could turn it or something. Another um, input. Yeah, so I will leave that for folks. I really wanted to keep it simple. This is even too much for me. The original well, idea was- Lamar wanted a whole PCB milled out. And yeah. we didn't want that to be yet another barrier for people being able to build right. this. So right. this is way more easier. To I originally had the Feather RP2040 in here. And with the Feather, you have a built-in NeoPixel. So you didn't have to wire any NeoPixels. It was already built in, but this is what you got. You got a, a jewel. It's got more LEDs. So that's good. And uh, it's USB-C, it's Cutie Pie. The Feather was a bit overkill, you guys. Like It has like built-in LiPo charging and all these extra pins that I'm not using. Uh, so the Cutie Pie is just the winner for this one. Like It really works well. I really like this like kind of cut out here. Like, it looks so good, mm -hmm. a little cut out there. Yeah. Looks like it kind of sliced a little bit of the lemon out. Mm -hmm. But yeah. And then uh, Alvaro is pointing to these slip rings with the flange that we have in the store. They allow you to twist the wire, so right. maybe. Good, yeah. good for posting maybe. that, Alvaro. There you go. You got some, some options there. Yeah. But cool. No supports. They all print um, with no supports. Pick whatever color you like. That's fun. And then uh, Yanni's uh, great uh, GIF here of using a lemon to recharge your phone. Oh, that's funny. It like turns color. Mm -hmm. It's great. Yeah, yeah, I should print it all in white and then like it kind of changes color, the fruit color, fitting on your mood or something. So that's this uh, prototype. Um, oh, Connor. See if we can do that next week. Nice little segue on to yes, or last week we showed the um, update to the RP2040 uh, QD Pi. We had to update the little Lego holder because of the bottom here is now flat compared to the other, uh, the non RP2040, the standard one, uh, just because of the bottom there. When you have the SPI chip soldered on, which you kind of need to have if you want to have all of the peripherals attached to it. It'll quickly run out of memory if you don't. There had to be like, see these little studs in there to make room for that. All of that is built into the RP2040 chip in there. So it is nice and flush. So just some updates to that and makes it a little bit more slimmer. If you want to make a nice little Lego compatible um, little prep board for your projects, it's just snap in like that. And we also made them for the RP2040 uh, Itsy Bitsy too. This guy just slides in. Yeah, that's like great. That. Like that. Yeah, I think this is the first one where we've uh, utilized uh, something where it just slides in. And same deal here, just the uh, two by three little stud setup. And we also have the ones that have the twos if you want to have that attached to the back. Uh, nice way to, instead of, if you don't want to go with the breadboard, you can go with the Lego base plate. Yeah, good so way to hold stuff. Mm -hmm. Temporarily hold stuff together. Yeah. All right, so this will be next week. Yeah, hopefully. We'll try. Yeah, we'll try it. Yeah, I love the clickiness. You have yeah. the, uh, what are the, the switch types? It's the clear. Yeah, give yeah you so the these clicky. are uh, Cali Box White, yep. which are the clickiest. The other ones don't make any click, so I didn't even bother with it. Where is the, <laughs> There's there browns. Go. It has a little bit of a bump, but they're not audible. There's, uh, do we have blue ones? Yes, we do. There's a product link um, that shows all of them. Oh man, it looks like the audio's going up and down. It's back right now. It's just up and down. What's up and down? Just the audio. Oh, boy. No, you're good right I know, now. it's good now. I'm looking at the levels, but yeah. So, yeah, so this page will show you all of the colors that we have.
<laughs> what, what Lars has somehow. Yeah, Lars has made him. it over here to Florida. <laughs> He's like, what's going on here, folks? I hear you have a. Uh, you have some stuff down here in Florida. <laughs> Dang it, Lars. You back there. <laughs> we need a GIF. In I know, the, I, need um, a, I need a Lars GIF. The Matrix. Mm -hmm. All right, well, uh, those are the Cali switches. Um, Pedro has a link there. We're going to try to go and to the next segment through. here. Yeah, Shop Talk. <laughs> Some of the other Shop Talk stuff that we were looking at. Uh, Ninja Tech. We love all of their Ninja Flex stuff or a lot of the builds. They released a new Chinchilla type Ninja Flex. It's a 75A, which is super soft. It's supposed to be for like wearables and like medical devices for sports and fashion. So the difference is that it's just a lot softer than the AT5A material that they have. Uh, so I thought I'd test it out on this. Um, some of the buttons here that we have on the Pi badge. So of course we'll go ahead in here and just play some Super Mario. Let's see if I could turn that thing. Oh, I forgot you could do that. Yeah. So uh, a couple year ago, a couple years ago, we made the, this nice little case that um, encloses the battery on the back, add, lets you add the speaker and a slide switch so you can have the audio go like low and high. It's a pie um, badge. Yeah. So you have your nice little, um, uh, what are they called, hooks if you want to use it as a lanyard, but of course you want to use it as an NES uh, emulator here. Yeah. So as you're pressing the buttons, you can immediately feel that they are way softer than any of the Ninja Flex um, materials from before. And it just feels really nice in terms of when you press down on it, uh, you can just feel the smoothness from it. And it's a comparison between this guy and what we used before, which was the 95A. This uh, standard um, NinjaFlex TPU works on like Bowdens, a lot large variety of printers. You're definitely going to need a. Let me shut this off. You're definitely going to need a uh, a direct drive if you want to print with this material. Some of the things we noticed when uh, uh, just like feeling it, it feels like it leaves behind some sort of filmy texture. Uh, it should be okay on their website. It says it's yeah. been certified yeah, it for like, medical. Uh, it's a powdery sense. So like when you put on gloves, a new uh, pair of latex gloves, it has that powdery thing. I can't physically see anything we don't, yeah, that rubs but off it on just, it. It has that feel feeling, it. that after feeling. But um, it's like super soft. Though. Yeah. Let's keep going. Um, you got a unicorn horn. Let's unicorn show that. That, we sh that we printed with that as well. It, it again, just feels very nice. Like when you're using this for wearables, if you have something that's like up against your uh, your arm or whatever, it'll definitely feel a lot more uh, softer when it's pressed up against skin. That's actually one of the use cases that they were saying for like um, for like the open. What is it? The yeah. Let's look at the, the site. It'll tell you. Robotics. It'll tell you what it's good for. So they worked hard to get their certification for skin safe. So tested to be skin safe using Epi. Durham skin model. I'm not sure what that is. We'll look at it. There's a data sheet and stuff, but it is supposed to be like certified skin safe. So they're really pushing for wearables, right? Anything that has skin contact. So remember those Apple Watch bands that I designed a little it's bit ago? Soft. You could do that. that. Remember Pedro's uh, Apple Watch? Anything? Um, that's I'll chinchilla. Yeah. Yeah. Just speed it up. Really nice. Just yeah. kind of speed it up. Yep. No, that's basically it. It's yeah. just a very nice, softer fi uh, chinchilla. feel. Chinchilla. It's new, it came out yesterday. Mm -hmm. 75A is the hard shore hardness. That's the measurement for how hard or soft it is. Yeah. Regular NinjaFlex is 85A, right? Mm -hmm. 85 or 95? 95A is called, was it Armadillo? Cheetah? Yeah, that's they actually, cheetah? they call that one 75D, so what the it's not A. <laughs> really? Got it's more rigid, it's rigid. It's Come on, I gotta speed this up. My audio's gonna die. <laughs> they only have a couple colors. Get the 0.5 kilogram if you really are serious about NinjaFlex. If you're not serious about NinjaFlex, this is just news. Uh, it, it's, <laughs> it's probably, it, I don't think it's worthwhile right. if you're not already have kind a of bunch pricey. of- 100 bucks for a full kilogram. Yeah. So we went with the half a kilogram. We still have a whole thing of it. Yeah, and the uh, uh, shore hardness that I recommend for playing around would probably be the 95A. Yeah, they have it's, some of this. This normally isn't, this is just a baseline mm -hmm. for us. The 240C is normally what we print at, um, and the sprint speed's got to be pretty slow. So, uh, yeah, 
just feels really nice. Yeah, it feels great. Especially when buttons. you're gaming for long yeah. periods of hour. We're gonna play more with it. There was this weird thing there, Pedro pulled on the filament and it did not go back. It yeah. stayed pulled. You can watch the videos on how it's manufactured look like. They're using oh, a bunch of um, uh, like the foamy type stuff. Well, I their website, NinjaTag, you know. I think it was their YouTube. Okay. Here's their uh, their homepage, kind of has a little banner about it, Chinchilla 75A. They have this cute little Chinchilla uh, mascot. Who doesn't like a chinchilla? Yeah, the video shows they made like shoes out of it, like um, insoles. Well, it ain't on the product page. I know. How am I gonna? <laughs> they should have at least linked Ninja their Tech. YouTube video. We're one of your resellers. Tell us you're doing things. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right, moving on. Moving on, chinchilla and chill. All right, um, we're gonna do community makes now. Yeah, Am yeah. my audio still working? Yes. Yep. All right, the first one is a, is a multi-pass. This one is so cool. It's a really cool themed way to show off your, your vaccine card. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so tell us about it. Uh, this is inspired by Fifth Element, which we recently rewatched. It holds up so good. Yeah, man. I it's like a good it. movie. So this is a remix from... All right, so we got the... All right, uh, so this week's uh, Community Makes is this awesome vaccination card holder. This is inspired by Fifth Element. Uh, somebody remixed this from a con uh, conference badge. You have this nice little lanyard, a little thing you can attach to. You got your whole stuff there. And this is size for the uh, four by three size cards. This is not the actual one. I just printed this out so I could blur out all my information. And yeah, this is a nice way to uh, store your card uh you're definitely gonna need these for yeah. uh, traveling around so when we go on a cruise or something i will be bringing this and showing it off like that of course you can add more details and colors to yeah. match what it actually looked like on fifth element i think it's supposed to be gray but we printed these in orange uh for lamar and phil's request so yeah lamar and phil awesome. will uh, be showing theirs off and this uh, little thing out. yeah i really like the design of this they yeah, have this little uh hole on there and this little thing that snaps right on there like that, so it'll hold it in place. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, three pieces, you do have to glue this top mm -hmm. part onto the base, just so you can have, so you can not use you know, support materials oh, when printing technique. these. Oh, Splitting uh, parts, yeah. Mm -hmm. for, One of my uh, favorite things to do for uh, or assembling three print parts. Yeah. Some folks say you could use the ironing um, feature in their Prusa slicer to make this Ooh. more kind of flat. I don't think Pura, Pura has that, nice. so that's why we didn't do that. But yes, yeah, yeah. Arm VP asking. In the yeah, they're asking if that is ironed. It is not. Yeah, yep. that's a we good switch test here. for that. Yeah. So on Thingiverse, the, uh, the, per the the person who made this level two, three, level three two. Can you verify yes, that? Yes, that is. That's the one that that's the remix. Yes, I am still. Here we go. Yeah, so she tweeted this out, and Phil saw this and was like, yo, level two, send me three. two, please. <laughs> yes, yes, level two, three. Yeah, so shout out to you um, for coming up with this one. And you can go and down the remix. rabbit hole of all of the remixes. There's different sizes, Actually, like we were saying before. A triple remix. This is a triple. multi pass badge holder for your conference badge, which was a remix of this one. So there's three levels of remixes here. Level two, three. Hey. No. <laughs> uh, so Immerman. Uh, came up with this one, and it's sized for something different, but it was it looks like it was created in Tinkercad, but a little bit more color here, so that's cool. Is our audio cut again? No, yep. still going. Just All right, listening. so you can download this one for free, search for multi-pass, um, and you'll find the uh, the triage of remixes. But uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, very, very cool, and then shout out to level two, three for uh, remixing that one for uh, well well timed. Okay, let's look at the next stuff for uh, Community Makes. Um, That's really cool. Makes from around the globe from a lot of... Uh, oh, real quick, I want to show uh, Level 3's uh, original tweet. It has good photos and stuff, so you can check out Level 3's mm -hmm. kind of uh, thing here. And some other folks are chiming in, like, hey, you can paint it to look really, really cool. Hey. These are like some silver nice. things that I, I suppose it's one way to paint them. Mm -hmm. It's a good way to paint them. Very cool. And of course, everybody's posting the multi-pass yeah, GIFs uh -huh. in the chat. 
Yeah. Good movie. Recommend it. Cool. Look at everybody's cards. I feel kind of guilty <laughs> looking at everybody's cards. All right. Well, let's let's move on to. I like how they put the masks on them. Right. And moving on to right, some right, really right. cool makes from around yeah, yeah. the globe. First so, one is this really cool Guardian Sword from Breath of the Wild. Uh, this is, this was posted on the Facebook group for 3D printing. Highly recommend that one. Lots of cool posts on a lot of makes there. Really? Uh, this one was for uh, for his girls. Oh wow! Awesome. Great. And there's a video to go along with that if you want, if you want to search for that. And that one's by Brand. Thanks, Brand. Yeah, that's really good. Next one is a Keyblade, same uh, group, or a different group, the Creator Quilty group on yeah. Facebook. Mm -hmm. Almost done. That looks done to me. Maybe the chain. Fantastic. And this is from Daniel. Awesome. Excellent. And then the last one here is from uh, Fabio, who posted up uh, their make of the Pico Mini Fighter. That's great. I like yeah, the color. Great. He has a Flickr um, mm -hmm. link as well that has like his build. Nice. Really good choice of colors. Excellent. Well, that's going to do it before our audio cuts out. We want to thank everybody for joining us, and we'll be uh, show and telling tonight, I think. But uh, let's say hello and goodbye to everybody on the, on Discord. We really appreciate you guys tuning on, tuning in with us live and dealing with our uh, audio issues. But uh, yeah, thanks, Warcast. Thanks, Warcast. I got to update, and I just don't want to. <laughs> All right, let's uh, go to the housekeeping and okay later so. tonight is uh you know show and tell 7 30 hosting um pt and lamar will be hosting yep. and then uh after that at 8 p.m is ask an engineer we got some new stuff new products top secrets python and hardware all the news around the world everything yeah. going on with all the cool electronics you guys know and love so definitely stay tuned for that and then tomorrow is John Park's workshop. Yeah. Showing off a <laughs> ton of really cool projects that he's working on, gearing up for the next Ada Box. So definitely tune in every week for that. Yeah. And then on Friday is Deep Dive with Scott, 2 p.m. Yes. Last week was the one year anniversary. We're Yay. on to one year in a, in awesome. a week. Excellent. Lamar's live stream start on Sundays from the desk of Lady Ada. It's featuring the great search with the G key every Sunday at Hacker Random Hacker Times. Uh, from nine to ten. Nine to ten. It's been pretty consistent. Yeah, and then cool. repost it on all the socials and everything, so you can catch up on that. Yes, yes. And then Tuesday, that was yesterday. JP had a massive one yesterday with the RP twenty forty cutie pie. Tune in every week for all those Ooh. awesome deals. Get like half uh, half the percent off on yeah. whatever product is being reviewed. So definitely tune in every week for that. Let me know if I should start doing. Like crazy <laughs> reactions. I got the eyes for it, so let me know. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for us. Thank you for j joining us. Thank you for joining us and dealing with our um, our little issues here. But hey, <laughs> freaking lemon. Wirecast. It's like a flavorful lemon. So here you go, Wirecast. <laughs> I was like, quit. <laughs> That'd All be a great right, camera switcher. All right, folks, we'll see you later tonight. But until then, remember to make a great day. Make a lemony day. Bye, folks. Oh, this one. Ha. Later.